Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Crazy Cultists. It's for three to six players, it takes about 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I would say, probably 12 and up. In the game Crazy Cultists, you're basically trying to gain favor with the Dark One by adding pentagrams, or by adding tokens to this pentagram here. If you can get all five onto the pentagram before anybody else, you win. However, your opponents are going to do everything in their ability to stop you from doing that, along with trying to cultivate favor of their own. As soon as you can gather those tokens and place them on that board there, you're going to win. Just watch out. Let's go ahead and take a look down below and I'll show you everything in the game and then how to play. So here are the components for the game Crazy Cultists, and of course here's everything included. You're gonna get the box of the game, the rule book, and a deck of cards, along with these favor tokens and your pentagram board. Players are gonna simply start with three cards in their hand from this deck that you're gonna go ahead and shuffle, and on your turn you can either choose to play a card that gives you favor for the Dark Lord, and you put it in your tableau, in a row or a column I should say, and you also could choose to not play these and instead play something like these little cards here, which have things like polymerization, where you skip your next turn, or Necronomicon, yeah, minus ones and minus twos, these things here will discard a player's favor cards from their stack, and after they play one of those cards, doing one of those two things, they're then going to draw back up to three. So simply just play a card, then draw a card. You're never going to have any less or any more cards than three at the end of your turn in your hand, and uh, players are going to keep going around. Once a player is able to obtain ten points in their tableau from these little favor tokens, they're going to put one of these little tokens down. For every token they have in their pentagram, it will cost them one less favor the next time to gather another token, so if they have one favor a token on here, it's only going to cost them nine. If they have two, it's only going to cost them eight and seven, six, and so on and so forth. And that's basically the idea of the game. Uh, let's go ahead and take it down below and I'll show you a couple turns of play. So here we have the game Crazy Cultist for three players and it's all set up. And as you can see, everybody has their own player board as well as three cards to start the game with. The other three players simply aren't playing, so we're just gonna set them aside over here. This deck has been fully shuffled and these little uh, favor tokens are in reach of every player. To begin the game, choose a singular player to go ahead and start and they're gonna go ahead and play a card. And in this case, this player only only has favor tokens. He's got one, two, and three are favor cards, and he can play any one he wants, and you only play one card a turn. So he'll probably play this three here. After he's played that three, he's going to go ahead and draw a card, and now he is three steps closer to ten, which will get him a token on this board here. This player over here has got Toiling Trouble. It says discard two cards uh, of the same value from your favor stack. So you can give this to somebody else and make them discard a value card, or two value cards of the same number. This is a counter spell. It's not players messing with you, and so he'll play that favor point right there. So now he's got two. The next player is going to go ahead and he's got a three, a one, and a minus two, which actually makes the player discard two of their top favor card. So that's a useful card for later. So we'll go ahead and play this here right there. And then he's going to go ahead and draw his card. And then we're going to go to the next player's turn and look at the cards in hand. And he's going to go ahead and play his two there and draw a card. Now he's at five. He only needs five more. Uh, this guy's going to play his three and he's at five as well. And this player here, he's going to play a one. He's one down. All right, so what is this player going to do? He's got a one, he's got a three, and a two, a minus two. He'll play this minus two on that player, which in this case will make this player lose both of these cards, the first top two. But this player has a counter spell, so he can actually counter that card from being played and save his cards from being attacked. And his turn is going to end. Now it'll be this player's turn. And this player's got a card that can make a player skip a turn, discarding the top, discarding two of the same value. And then this card, show your hand to the player that dealt you this card, and that player may then take one card from your hand. So he'll play this evil eye on this player here. Look at a card from this player's hand. He'll take that three, nice and useful. And this player's going to draw. And then it's going to be this player's turn. Let's see what this guy's going to do. He'll simply play a one here and draw his card. And this player here, he's got his th a three there, so he'll draw that one. And he got that three from that last player, so that puts him at eight points, only two more left. And he is going to play minus one on this player here. This player doesn't have a counter spell, unfortunately, so he can't stop that from being played. Now it's this player's turn again. He's going to go ahead and drop his one down. That puts him at six. He got his counter spell now if he needs it. And this player's got a one, six, seven, eight, nine. He's still down by one point, so he's not able to get it just yet. This player's gonna drop a one down as well. And what's this guy gonna do? He's gonna play this one here. 
and then this guy is going to drop his two. Now he's secured at least 10 points, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are going to go away, and he's going to get one of these tokens here. And now he's going to start again fresh. But instead of 10 points here, now he only needs 9. After 9, he'll only need 8, 7, and then he'll finish it off with a 6. And that will actually conclude the game if he can manage to do that. But of course, other players may or may not let him do that. For instance, this player, Infernal, Infernal! <laughs> Infernal, Inferno, getting the top two cards away from this guy here. But remember, this guy has a counter spell, so he can actually counter spell that card. And uh, the game will just continue like that, going on and on and on as players continue to play cards and try and gather their little favor tokens on these boards here. Once somebody is able to reach a total of five favor tokens on these boards, the player is going to win, and that is how to play the game Crazy Cultists. There are a couple of little exceptions, a couple of variants to the rules. Let's go ahead above and talk about it along with my review. So that is how you play the game Crazy Cultist. It's a fairly simple take that game with a little bit of tableau management in the sense that you need to place down 10 points worth of cards, then nine, then eight, and so on and so forth. You can go above that unless you play with the variant that I like, specifically the one where you have to play exactly on the nose, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. You can't go over. It has to be played to make accordance with the Dark Lord's wishes, right? Uh, let's talk about a couple of other cards that I didn't go through too much. Uh, the Evil Eye, you can show a player your hand and uh, you have to give them that card, a card of their choice. Choice. There's, of course, the Falls from Grace and, and whatnot. It's the minus one and minus two in which you can make players lose stuff on the top of their tableau. Uh, you're going to have Switcheroos, when you trade the last card played in a favor stack with that of the player that dealt you this card. So you can switch cards, which can be very beneficial for you, and depending on the game mode as well, specifically. And, uh... That's pretty much how the game functions, playing a card, drawing a card, going through the motions, trying to stop players from doing certain things, trying to uh, help yourself as best as you possibly can with a couple of the different variants of play. Uh, the game plays well. It's a take that game in nature, so anybody who doesn't like cards that say you lose a turn or uh, cards that say like, oh, you get you lose these two or you lose this one here or how you want to play it, you're probably going to be more uh, uh, drifting away from this game. Or if you want a serious amount of strategy, it's probably not going to be the game for you either because it tends to be very, very quick and very, very straightforward as to usually what you want to play. It only changes in, in the variance, like I said. If you have a 1, 2, or 3, generally you're going to want to play that 3. The only times you're not going to want to play the 3 is if, let's say, you have a 9 and you only need 1. That would be the time you play a 1. Or in the case of you're playing the variant mode, which you have to have exactly 8 and you have 6, so you can't play that 3. You can only play a 2 or a 1. So that being said, the how you want to play the counter spells when you want to utilize those things can take effect in certain different ways. But it's, like I said, for the most part, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It works well as a family game, but it has a cultist dark one type of a theme. It's not too dark overly. It's pretty, pretty tame, I would say, as far as the theme goes. But some people might be turned off from that and if you like a little bit it's also a party style game it's fast it's quick it has this kind of energy to it as you're playing cards down oh he's he's ahead we gotta mess with him or he's ahead. alliances are very easily broken in this game as as easily as they are formed at one point you might be working with a player and then on your next turn they might be your mortal enemy just based on a card that you happen to play that may have helped you a little more than them or if maybe you got a little farther on the fair track than they did generally though because of those interactions the game stays very very close everybody has an opportunity to win until that very last card is played but nobody really is able to mess with you like in Munchkin uh, where you, you're at level 9 and if you're at level 9 everybody messes with you but in this case it doesn't happen as much because there's not as many cards that can really really mess with you over and over again. There are tendencies to where players will be able to play things on you consecutively that can really mess with you but generally that's because you've drawn really well throughout the game so it has a balancing act anyway if you like the idea of crazy cultists you can check it out down below it's a fun little take that style game it's one i'd probably bring out at a party or some for a gateway game for people who haven't played any take that games before or people who are just really in in, in, in interest with the theme of being a crazy cultist anyway take a look down below in the link in the description to take a look at the game and uh let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, let's hit the outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you want to check out more of the videos here, like, subscribe, and comment. And all those help, we do greatly appreciate it, as well as taking a look at Crazy Cultists. It is a Crazy Cultist style game, card game where you're going to go back and forth with each other, and there's going to be some shenanigans involved in this game, as well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away two games right now currently. One is Bloodborne, the other one is Dogs, and, and three, actually, Dungeons & Dragons 
wins the starter set. Uh, as well as checking out our friends at mainboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to being a crazy cultist with you next time.